Equity and inclusion are vital for the City of Greensboro's ability to grow and innovate in such a fast-changing environment. One Greensboro is a monthly show that highlights some of the ways the Office of Equity and Inclusion honors the observances listed on our heritage calendar and spotlights a City of Greensboro employee in a segment we call The One. These observances are an integral part of the National Equal Employment Opportunity and Civil Rights Program and encourage us to live as one people, one community, one Greensboro. Welcome to this month's episode of One Greensboro. During the month of November, the City of Greensboro celebrates Native American Alaskan Native Heritage Month. The month is a time to celebrate rich and diverse cultures, traditions, and histories, as well as acknowledge the important contributions of Native people. This month, we are changing our intimate conversation just a little bit. This month, we'll chat with two of our wonderful employees, Buddy Mitchell and Lori Reed. Hi, Buddy. Hi, hey. Lori. Hey, Hello. how you doing? I'm wonderful, and welcome to One Greensboro. Thank Glad you. To be here. Yes. First question that I have for both of you, and I'll go ahead, ladies first, and start with Lori. If you could introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about what you do for the city of Greensboro, and tell us a little bit about your background. Okay. Lori Reed, as you just mentioned, I'm the contact center manager. I've been with the city since January 2019. Boy, time flies, time especially flies. since COVID, right? Uh, I am from a small town in Sampson County. Uh, it's Clinton, North Carolina, down east. I belong to the state-recognized Kohari tribe. As you can see, I present African-American yes. uh, because my mother is Native and my father is African-American. Okay, and I'm sure we'll get a little bit more in depth Absolutely. in that in a little bit. Okay, and Buddy, my Buddy Buddy. Tell us about that right. <laughs> I'm Buddy Mitchell. I work for the Department of Transportation. I work for Signs and Markings and also Traffic Control. I'm from Robertson County, where it's pronounced Robertson County, mm -hmm. but everybody says Robertson County. Um, I'm part of the Lumbee tribe and on my father's side and Tuscarorn on my mother's side. Okay. So I was able to do a background check and was able to go back to 1650 on her side. Wow. Tracing the ancestries. So. Wow. Did you say 1650? 1650. Wow. Okay. Yes. Well, I can't wait to hear more about that as okay, we kind of talk sure. a little bit. Okay. So my first question to you is, we are in the month of November and we celebrate Native American History Month. So what do you both think about when you hear Native American History Month? Let's start with you, buddy. What do you think about? I th uh, well, it's recognizing the Indian people that's been here for centuries. And uh, I'm glad that somebody's recognizing them and still letting us known, letting people know that we're still around and uh, celebrating our heritage. Okay, okay, and Lori? I was gonna say pretty much the same thing, even though if you'd ask my mother, she'd say, we've never gone any place, so I don't know why you gotta recognize us now. That uh, was where I was kind of going, <laughs> exactly, exactly. So it's, 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 you know, different philosophies that are out there about what's happened in history. But again, to both of you all, do you think that it just needs to be one month or should we celebrate it year round? Because I know um, we put a lot of emphasis on November, good, bad, or indifferent, but are there other things that happen throughout the year that, you know, are a little bit more, um, I'd say, uh, interesting as far as what we can also celebrate well, that you can talk about? They have powwows every so often, every quarter. Each tribe is different, and they have a powwow like the Cherokee Indians. Theirs is in July. Okay. Gifford Natives is in September. Um, different ones are like the Kohari. Theirs is in October. October. And you have them in the spring, so actually we're really celebrating year round. Year round. Ourselves. Nobody else is, but we are. We're celebrating year round. And it keeps the heritage alive. And it lets the young people know don't let the what the elders built for us die. Mm -hmm. So we keep we keep the young people into it, involved in it. And it brings them in and keeps the tribes going and our heritage going. Wonderful. And Buddy, you mentioned elders, and um, I just wanted you, do you mind at a high level explaining to the audience what, what do elders mean in the Native American? Anybody that's older than you is an elder. It's considered <laughs> it's an the, elder. It's okay. considered an elder, okay. and they are the wise ones. That's the ones you go to, and they sit back and observe everything that you do, or, and they teach you, because uh, they've learned from their elders. Okay. 
So it's handed down through generations. Through generations. Yes. Okay. And did you experience that as well through what you've um, talked about with your mom and her side of the uh, family? No. You'd have to know my story to understand a little better. Tell um, us that okay. story if you could, Laura. Uh, growing up, I never realized I was Native. Mm. Uh, when my mother was younger, she was one of nine daughters. There was not an Indian school. So my grandfather took it upon himself to move he and his wife and his nine girls to the town of Clinton so they could mm -hmm. go to school. Mm -hmm. The only school there that they could go to was an, an African-American school. Well, at the time it was a Negro school. Wow. Uh, wow. So that kind of caused a rift in the family because Indian culture was one that really stuck together. You really didn't have a lot to do with outsiders. Mm -hmm. So when they moved to where they went to the Negro school, there was my grandfather and his brothers, they just kind of was no communication there. It wasn't until I grew up and went to high school that I was going to school with some of my relatives. Didn't even realize they were relatives. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So have you been able to pass down all of that good heritage uh, from the elders to your daughters or anyone else in the family? My younger daughter, more so than my older daughter. Uh, my younger daughter became more active with uh, the Native group it, while she was in high school. Uh, so she did a lot of activities with them. She even got an Indian, uh, a uh, Eagle Feather, Eagle feather. Uh, for graduation. So she was pretty proud about that. We do uh, attend powwows. We've been to several of the council meetings uh, where we're learning more together. Good. Uh, Good. My mom, on the other hand, they were younger too, so there was not a lot of mix of culture for her either. Even in, during that time? E even during that time. Wow. And I have to ask, because y'all were talking about the feather, and both of y'all looked at each other. So mm -hmm. what is the significance of the feather, if you don't mind? It's the highest honor you can get in the Indian tribe because the eagle is the only bird that can fly highest to the Creator. Mm. So it's an honor that you get one of those, and you have to earn it. You have to earn it. You have to earn it. And when did you earn yours, buddy? Years ago. Years ago. Yeah. You're not going to tell. Okay. All right. I'll keep going. Years I'll keep ago. going. Years ago. All right. All right. Um, do you think that this month should be combined with Alaska Native Month? Because I know right now it is combined most of the time. So do you think it should be two separate months? Because you mentioned there are different celebrations throughout the year. Why not just have one month for each one? Why combine? Do you believe in that? There's nothing wrong with combining both of them because they're Native Americans also, but they're just from another descent of the Native Americans. They're further north. Their traditions are totally different than ours, but they're still just like the Aztec Indians in Mexico. They're Native American, mm -hmm. but they celebrate different, and their regalians are different than American Indians here, but they celebrate the same, but they're still Native Americans even though they live in Mexico. Gotcha, gotcha. So it's one group, but just celebrated just a little bit differently. Different, so yes. the co combining, would you say mm -hmm. also? I would agree with that. Okay. Um, recognizing all of the accomplishments and contributions of Native Americans, regardless of whether you are Central, uh, South American, any indigenous, I think I'm okay with the combining of it, as long as we make sure that we are recognizing, Absolutely. celebrating. Absolutely. And not mocked. Right. Exactly. And why do you yeah. say that, buddy? Well, there's people that like to, they call it our regalians, outfits, and mm -hmm. they like to put them on. And we don't, we don't mind that they do want to dress like us at a powwow, but don't mock us. If you want to learn the dances, learn them the right way, not Absolutely. a silly way. Absolutely. Which leads me somewhat to my next question about, do you consider yourselves a minority group, um, you know, with your heritage and your family? Um, you know, I know here at the city of Greensboro, statistics wise, you know, this group is one of our most underrepresented groups. We've tried to start an employee resource group and we can't seem to get it off the ground because we don't have that many employees right. that can participate. So would you consider this a minority group? And if so, or if not, why? No, I don't, I don't consider this minority because this is our country. Mm. Everybody that came here is an immigrant or minority okay. from another country. When you came here, this was our land. Is a uh, we welcomed everybody, but we got treated different. But we're not a minority group. Gotcha. Everybody else is. Gotcha. Okay. That's exactly what my mother would say. Um, 
but when you look at it from the standpoint of one being major versus minor, then I would say yes, because we're a smaller population yes. within like the city Absolutely. Uh, or even with uh, Greensboro, mm -hmm. the city mm -hmm. employees or the city of Greensboro. We are a smaller group amongst that. So from that regard, I would say yes, we are a minority. But I agree with Buddy as it relates to we are not a minority from the standpoint of we were here first. We were here first. Got it. Makes sense. Makes right. sense. Is there anything you can think off the cuff that we could do to reach out more, do more outreach, do more, um, uh, you know, events where we can let people know about the city of Greensboro, what we do, and also especially from a hiring perspective, which is part of what I'm responsible for as well, too, and working with um, the HR department. So is there anything different that we could be doing? You would have to go out to the Indian community and let people know what you Okay. Your intentions are. Mm -hmm. That's what. That's the only way you're gonna get into because they stay secluded. Absolutely. They stay to themselves, mm -hmm. and they don't want to bother nobody. You would have to go out and reach to them and build the bridge. Yeah, mm -hmm. build a relationship. Because trust, and it sounds like, is exactly. Love. Got there it. you go, and then they were gonna come and respond to you. Okay, makes sense. You start to see a little more of that bridge building with the younger generation. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, like your daughter. Yeah, like my daughter. But if you go back. My generation, which I don't want to tell my age, but even <laughs> a little further back, there was none of that. Very separated. You just didn't see the mixing. People didn't understand them, and they didn't want you to really understand them. This is our culture. We want to make sure that we are maintaining that culture. Not a lot of, of mixing. So I agree with Buddy. You definitely have to build a bridge. Right, right. right. And Lori, you touched on it a little bit, um, but was there a time in your life, um, once you've been aware, and then I'll kind of flip it to you, Buddy, um, of your background and your history that you didn't or could not continue to associate with being Native American? Um, was there any time since you've kind of known that Never. you pulled back a little bit? Uh. I can't say that I've pulled back. Mm -hmm. um, if more, I would say I've moved forward with it. Mm. Uh, just from the standpoint of, because I look the way that I look, I make it a point to let people know that there's more to me than my African American side, because mm -hmm. I want to recognize my mother's side of the family Absolutely. as well. Right. So I kind of step into it versus pull back from it. Now, are there times where you're the only one? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Uh, used to be that you were the only African American doing something yes. or the only woman yes. doing something. Yes. But it's even smaller <laughs> to be the only native doing something. Right. Absolutely. And Buddy, I know with you growing up, and we've had this conversation before, was there ever a time in your childhood or, you know, growing up years that you did not relate or did not want to relate to being native? No, not really, because we were taught to stand our ground no matter what. I got picked on a lot. Not uh, you, not Buddy. Yeah. I know you had a comeback for him, though, Buddy. Said, oh, you, what you going to do, scalp us? Ooh. I heard that in elementary school, and I was the only mm -hmm. Indian kid of any color mm -hmm. in elementary school. Mm -hmm. I was raised around nothing but Indian people. There was black people that stayed here, the whites stayed here, and the Indians stayed here. Right. Then it kind of started merging, but my mother said, well, you're going to go to school here. Well, I was the only kid. Then I got picked on. Also, I wouldn't stay in school. I'd leave because mm. I got tired of it. But then after a while, my father said, enough is enough. You're going to stand up. Be proud of what you are. Good. And I did. Good for Dad. It called for, for some fights. But, yeah. We're not going to talk about that later. <laughs> We're talk, we'll talk about that offline. We'll talk about that later. Okay, right. okay, okay. okay. Um, is the Native American um, experience, would either one of you all say, different from those of other groups, African American, um, Hispanic American? I know, Buddy, you mentioned what you said about, you know, originally being here. Right. But is there anything else that you can point as a difference or a similarity with any other, um, you know, minority group or people of color, persons of color? Well, you've had to deal with uh, being who you are in different situations or where you were at at certain times. You've had to deal with it. Mm -hmm. As time went on, you know, like I would always tell people, um, I can't change what happened in the past. Mm -hmm. All I can try to do is make it better in the future mm -hmm. for everybody and bring out the Indian people that we're more recognized in. Right. And that we're not savages. Absolutely. And we're not, you know, scalpers. Right. So that's what everybody was thinking. When I was going to school, you know, they've been watching too many John Wayne movies. Oh, you're going to scalp us, or you're going to steal this. 
favorite saving. You an Indian giver. Oh, you know, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to give you something, all right. <laughs> and I'm just curious, did you have a problem with the Washington Redskins logo? No. No, no, no. Why? Because it kept our heritage alive. Got it. Got it. Okay. You take it away, nobody's going to know about it. Mm. Every time see somebody sees the Redskins or the Indians, mm -hmm. Cleveland Indians, mm -hmm. Lionel of Braves, Kansas City Chiefs, it's got that Indian logo. Okay. Okay. Anything you can think of, Lori, from um, that perspective? No. Okay. Yeah, but okay. he did a good job of covering all of that. Yes, he did. And that's why I'm going to get this next one for you. Indigenous Peoples Day mm -hmm. um, versus Columbus Day. I know there's been huge debates. It's been in the news lately. What are your thoughts um, of the renaming, the recelebration, kind of reclaiming that day for Indigenous Peoples Day? Because that's one thing we've done here at the city over the last year. We celebrate that day as Indigenous Peoples Day. So what are your thoughts first and then I'll come to Buddy? Well, it, that's a good question. I think because if I was Italian, I would probably have an issue with it. Mm -hmm. uh, but since I'm not Italian, I think that it is more inclusive given, given what occurred after mm -hmm. that it be Indigenous Peoples Day mm -hmm. versus uh, Columbus Day. So uh, all of the hoopla that has been out there in the media, I think is rightfully so. Got it. Makes sense. Uh, I can kind of liken that to some of the was maybe off the beaten path, but the other side of me that talks about, mm -hmm. that thinks about mm -hmm. the Confederate monuments and Absolutely. that sort of thing. Uh, mm -hmm. But I will say that when you um, remove all of the history, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, mm -hmm. something is lost. Absolutely. So I think we need to remember the fact that we were here mm -hmm. and there were some atrocities that were committed yeah. against Native mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. So we need to remember that from all sides. I know that's kind of off the subject no, as actually, it relates to Columbus on. and it's Indigenous on. Peoples it's Day, on. but uh, I think there's arguments on both sides of it. Absolutely. Reclaiming the future is how I kind of see it with the name changes. Right. What about you, buddy? Should be Indian Day. Mm -hmm. He discovered that he landed. Actually, he didn't land in America. It was in the Bahamas where he mm -hmm. landed. That's true. So he didn't land here in America, so, but it should be Indian Day because he discovered that there was somebody here. He thought he had landed in the West Indies, mm -hmm. called us Indians, but it should be Indian Day. Got it. And I've heard you kind of go back and forth. Is there a preference between Indian and Native or just for, you know, learning purposes for the audience? Is there a preference or is it by person, by family. Well, some people get it confused when you say Indian, they think you're from India. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I prefer Native American. Got it. Got Native it. American. Got it. Okay. And because then they say, well, you, you, you make it sound like you're from somewhere else where you're not no native of this land. Absolutely. And I equate that to African American and black. So it's kind of confusing as well. I'm sure you can kind of right. think of that as well. So, okay. So no preference, but holistically, but for you, it's native. Yes. Got it. What about Same for you? Here. Same native. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure your mama would say native. Yes. Got it. Just she making would. sure. Got, got to represent mom in the interview. Yes. Got to yes. Represent mom. She definitely would say that. I didn't come over on a boat. None of my family yeah. did. We were here first. Yes. <laughs> I got to talk to mama. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm mom sorry. is 92, and believe me, she'll give you exactly okay. how I she's feeling. Wait. I cannot <laughs> wait. I cannot wait. So my last question for both of you all is, we talked a little bit about it a few moments ago, but what would be your vision for natives, as we just said, here in the city of Greensboro, but also where we work in the city of Greensboro? What would be your vision? Lori? Well, for me, I think it's with any um, group that's underrepresented or uh, disparaged, that you're fully heard, that you're fully included, that you have a seat at the table where you have the opportunity to share from your perspective, because out of your perspective can come some really good things. Mm -hmm. If you think only one way all the time, you get what you always got, right? Absolutely and you want hard. to do something different. So if you have an opportunity to hear from people that are mm -hmm. different, mm -hmm. it can't do anything but make us better. Got it. So that would be my vision. Okay. Great. Thank you. And that's internal and external. Yes. Got it. What about the you? The main thing is that maybe see if we could hire more Native Americans here at the city, get them involved, let them know that they do have opportunity here, just like me and Lori. Absolutely. You know, maybe we could be a prime example to them. Say, hey, if we can do it, you can also. Absolutely. So I'm counting on both of you all to serve on that recruiting team that we are developing. And I know also Lori's very active with our ERGs and we're about to get you 
as active again as well too. There so yes, uh, but yes. thank you. I knew that was a yes. I didn't have to ask. So but <laughs> always. y'all always, always. <laughs> but y'all thank you so very much. I hope if nothing else, this conversation can concern um, can serve as a learning uh, moment for those who might have had some questions about what the month was about and exactly what uh, terminology should be used and just a little bit about you all and the differences you all have, but also the similarities you have well, as well. Also, too. when the powwow start up again, mm -hmm. they need to visit a powwow. Absolutely, absolutely. Anywhere that's over the state, all they got to do is go online. They can pick which one they want. Most of them are similar to each other mm -hmm. here in North Carolina. Now, when you get out in the Midwest, they're a little different. A little different. But still got the same meaning behind it. Got it. And what is that? Indian heritage. Got it. That's what pride. I thought you were going to say. Yeah. And yes. pride. And pride. Yeah. And what better way to end. So thank you all so very much. I appreciate you taking these few moments to discuss. And hopefully we can get back together again and do it again next sure. year. If Anytime. not sooner. Wonderful. Anytime. Thank Love you all. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you for having thank us. You. Our second focus this month for the One Greensboro Show is Transgender Awareness Week. And I am so thrilled to talk to one of my friends. I've had him for several trainings with the city and several organizations that I've been a part of. Good morning, Maria. I'm doing great. And it's so good to connect with you again. I've enjoyed like doing things with you over the past eight or nine years. And uh, I'm just very glad to be here. I'm Absolutely. Just to kind of reintroduce myself. Please, um, please do. Had, I had 31 years in IBM, and then I took early retirement 10 years ago and started my own company. And I wanted to focus on the areas that I was the most passionate about during my IBM career, mm -hmm. and that is uh, career development and diversity. And then within diversity, uh, I have a deep expertise in LGBTQ diversity, including transgender, unconscious bias, and employee resource groups. Wow, and I know we've used you for several of them. So yes, I'm very, very excited about that. So my first question for you is, um, why is Transgender Awareness Week celebrated? Could you tell us a little bit about that? Well, it's celebrated uh, because there's a really need in our country now to start educating people around the transgender community. Uh, the transgender community is now much more visible and it really is growing in numbers. And it's really an an org a part of our population that's, that's, ex that's experiencing various challenges. Like for example, the murder rate is nine times higher for the transgender community than for non-transgender people. 29% of transgender people live in poverty compared to 14% of the general population. The unemployment rate for transgender people is three times the national average. And 30% of trans people have been fired denied a promotion or harassed in the workplace uh, due to their gender identity. So it's very important to bring forward these concerns. But in addition, we should also celebrate and recognize transgender pioneers and transgender people who have made a positive contribution you know, to the world. For example, Martine Rothblatt uh, is a transgender woman. She invented Cirrus Radio and she's now the CEO of United Therapeutics. Of course, wow. people know Warren Cox, you know, on Orange is the New Black, you know, Janet Mock, who's a famous speaker and writer, as Bono, who's the uh, offspring of Sonny and Cher. So we also want to celebrate the positive things about the transgender community. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, I'm just so excited that we can celebrate. And I know, um, you know, each year we try to put more and more uh, education around, especially our LGBTQ plus month, um, which we typically celebrate in June. But this year we wanted to go a little bit further, right. also bring some type of celebration to Transgender Awareness Week. But a lot of people don't know as well, there is one specific day November 20th, that is Transgender Day of Remembrance. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Right. The, uh, trans, de the trans Day of Remembrance uh, was started on November 20th, uh, 1999. And that was about a year after Rita Hester, who was a transgender activist uh, in Boston, was found murdered in her own apartment. Mm. Uh, and it's very sad that transgender people are murdered or physically harmed at an extreme high rate uh, compared to the population which is often fueled by hatred or misunderstanding of this segment of the population. 
And what Trans Day of Remembrance does is they're usually held around the country, usually a candlelight virgil, and uh, somebody will read the names of all the transgender individuals that were uh, murdered uh, since the last Transgender Day of Remembrance. Wow, wow. And I know here at the city, we're planning on doing uh, training on that day so we can help right. our employees and especially our hiring managers better understand, you know, everything you just said and just put things into a better perspective. So hopefully we can take that moment of silence as well during that training. So I'm so excited we're doing something on November 20th. So wonderful. Us this year. Yay, we're doing yes. something. So what types of activities could um, the city um, or other business spon businesses sponsor during Transgender Awareness Week and or uh, the day? Um, could you give us some suggestions besides maybe the candlelight visuals? Yeah, and in fact, uh, this is, I can also make a plug now for TotalEngagementConsulting.com, so check it out because I do do a lot of training and work with companies around uh, transgender diversity. And I think what you want to do is maybe look at the bigger picture, not just focus on this day or this week, but assure that you have the right policies and programs in place. And it mm -hmm. starts with having the words uh, gender identity and expression in your EO policy. So maybe mm -hmm. around Trans Day of Remembrance, review these things like that. Uh, adding transition health benefits uh, into your health benefits programs. Uh, ensuring that you have training and education for all your employees so that they will treat their trans coworkers and trans clients and residents uh, and customers with total respect. Uh, maybe you can get with other companies and have a job fair uh, and for and focus on transgender talent and maybe have activities like resume writing workshops and helping uh, teach transgender people how to be successful in terms of their interviewing skills. And then companies that actually donate money to community organizations, maybe you can give financially uh, to trans-specific initiatives sponsored by your Greensboro LGBT Center. Absolutely. Those are great suggestions. Great suggestions, Dan. And I love, I'm all about career fairs, um, especially virtual. So definitely, I know we tried that a few years ago, um, met with a few people that were able to attend, but I really think if we were to band with other companies in Greensboro, we could really make that nice. So I'm going to put that at the top of my list. Thank you for great. Thank you. Thank you. And shameless plug for us, you know, we are very, very proud at the city of Greensboro, which I know, you know, we have been number one on the human rights campaign MEI index for the last five years. So I know we've been all in the politics lately, but I'm patiently awaiting our score so I can see if we're still number one in North Carolina and South Carolina for the sixth straight year in a row because of some of those things. So I'm hoping, keep your fingers crossed for me. Yes. Thank you for being a pioneer and leading that work. And I think we when enjoy. city governments are doing the right thing, it really sends a very strong message to businesses and all the citizens. So thank you for uh, Greensboro being a real leader in this area. Absolutely. And I can truly say it's because of some of the trainings that I've gone awesome. to you. So thank you, Stan. Thank you. You're welcome. You are awesome. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, Stan, as always, it's been a true pleasure talking with you. Uh, every time I, I declare we talk, I learn something new. Oh, good. Thank you so, so much for all of your help, um, you know, throughout across the country with what you're doing, uh, but also helping us at the city of Greensboro and some other, like I said, key organizations that you have really um, been a beacon of light to with uh, the message you gave us today. So thank you so much for telling us about Transgender Awareness Week and just some other little nuggets that I hope many, many other companies will take advantage of. So thank you, I appreciate it so much. Well, I really appreciate being here with you, Maria. It was an honor to be uh, invited to do this interview. And I wish everyone uh, in the city of Greensboro a, uh, a happy and informative Transgender Awareness Week. Thank you, Stan. Thank you so much.